Hello totally, it's Mark Carew here, finally after months and months. Ontario, Canada, where I live, has been in shutdown in one form or another thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic up until today. Today restrictions were cut back to 50% so we can actually go out and have a sandwich, see some people, it's a big step forward and that brings us to another point of going to the range uh, filming at a range in Canada is a uh, is an event that has to be permitted by the club and most clubs won't give permission and my particular club although I did not ask I because I knew what the answer would be. And it's not due to some bureaucratic or autocratic persons at the club. It's just fear of recrimination from the federal government and the chief firearms office. The chief firearms office will carefully pick, go through pictures with a fine tooth comb, looking for petty violations, if any. The ones they can't find, they'll make up. However, that's another rant. What I'd like to talk about today is what um, totally your last video was this wonderful Remington 700 in 22-250 with a 27.5 inch barrel. and The amazing velocity and accuracy got. I was highly impressed. So that got me going to revisit something that I did quite a number of years ago in the realm of velocity. Back in the 1930s there was a gentleman by, by the name of Philip B. Sharp and he was quite an accomplished man. He worked with Springfield Armory developing firearms, loads that soldiers would eventually use. He was instrumental in the Americans firearms development program. He was also an avid writer, experimenter, and he did a lot of work that uh, today we stand on his shoulders. Or one bit of uh, writing that he did in a magazine, and it appeared actually again in his, uh, in his uh, book uh, Handloads and Rifles, published initially in the late 1930s, and reprinted a number of times well into the 50s and again after his death. Regardless, one of the claims that was made was that some of the ultra high velocity cartridges that were being developed by wildcatters at the time, his claim was that with a proper bullet, one of these cartridges could propel a bullet to penetrate a one inch mild steel plate at 200 yards. When I read that, I initially thought, no. At any rate, not to uh, defame Mr. Sharp, I decided as an experimenter that I would set out upon that challenge. And what I did was with the cooperation of a gunsmith and a barrel maker, I decided that I would pick the two 22-243 Middlestead. I had done uh, some reading in the past. This article alone is, uh, I just merely uh, photocopied it out of a book. Regardless, this developer of the 22-243 Middlestead has attained some quite enormous velocities, but mainly with long uh, bullets, heavy for caliber. However, I decided to go a different way on this. So what I did was I had a, a Ruger Model 77 in 243 doing very little. And I decided to have a barrel made up for it. And I decided to go with a slower twist. I had read that uh, the aeronautics and uh, again the... Uh, people working in astronomy in an effort to create high impact velocities or simulations 
had used smooth bore barrels to uh, propel at that time glass beads at enormous velocities. I seem to recall somewhere around 6,500 feet per second. And since then there's been electric rail guns that go much faster, but that's a different topic. Regardless, when all the when all was said and done, I ended up with this rifle right here. Excuse the panning back and forth, just to give you an idea. And this little gem was the product. I wasn't so concerned with accuracy as I was with velocity. So what I ended up with is a 22-243 middle stead with a 28-inch barrel and the twist I had ordered and received a custom button to cut a 1 in 20 twist. My theory was that I would shoot a very light for caliber bullet and I would propel it to enormous velocities or at least enormous for me. Right behind we have my trusty 220 Swift and we used the 220 Swift or at least I used the 220 Swift in this little experiment as a control. So I had developed some pretty high velocity loads for the 220 Swift. In this case, a little over 4,200 feet a second with a 52 grain bullet. And that bullet could not crash through a one inch mild steel plate. It just wasn't fast enough. Uh, I experimented with different steels. I eventually contacted a metallurgist and I was able to locate a small sample of one inch mild steel plate that by his reckoning was made probably in the late 1940s. I, I couldn't locate something that was done in the late 30s as Philip Sharp had claimed to use. Regardless I think we made a reasonable effort. So right over here on the left we have the 223 Remington or 556 by 45. Beside it, 219 improved zipper, which we've talked about previously. To the right of it, we've got the 22-243 middle stad with a 40 grain Sierra hollow point. And to the right of it, a 220 Swift with the aforementioned 52 grain spear hollow point. So what I did is I got some loads worked up and we ended up, or at least, I ended up with a safe load that ultimately, try to hold it steady for you, good luck on that, I was able to go just over 5,000 feet a second with this 40 grain bullet. And I owe that to the slow twist. I experimented with different powders and I found that 4320 worked just as well. I wouldn't recommend trying to duplicate this as I can't vouch for this load in another rifle. It could be extremely dangerous. So what we did once once we I another gentleman was helping me from time to time. We then took our that's two that's right there that's the 220 Swift and what we did is this is our one inch mild steel plate maybe I'll set it here maybe I get a better view of it and one bullet could not penetrate the plate and this was at 100 yards so I then attempted to fire another shot into the same hole and roughly got it there. Uh, again it did not penetrate. It didn't bulge the back either. It's smooth. So with all due respect for Philip B. Sharp, um, I couldn't do it. Now not to mean that that experiment is a waste and we've got a rifle here that's now a wall hanger. I do shoot it occasionally, and I shot it over the Canada Day holiday. So, 
see if we can get something that you can see. This is an older target. I was at the range at a previous time. The group on the right, that's the 220 Swift. And to the left is the 22 Mach 5, or what I what what we know is the 22 243 Middlestead. I've since nicknamed it the 22 Mach 5 because of its velocity. Mach 5, five times the speed of sound. You get it. So for this experiment, what I did to make sure that both rifles were sighted at the same point of impact, roughly. Here is a rough group off the bag, again, with the 22-243 middle stead. You can see the rough height. It's not a great group. And the 220 Swift. You can see they're pretty much at the same level. Moving the target out to 300 yards and then aiming at the top diamond, center point, with a 220 Swift 52 grain hollow point at 4200 feet a second, we have this drop. Now, same point of impact for the 22 to 43 middle stat with a 40 grain hollow point, we have this drop. You can see the difference that that makes. You know, that light bullet would be shedding velocity much more rapidly, but it still shoots much flatter than the Swift. The Swift is a more accurate rifle. It's just a hunting rifle. But you can see it still has its uses. It still works just fine. I know this has been a long and meandering video totally, but it may be of some use. And I really love your video on the 22-250 shooting that 4 inch gong or was it a 2 inch gong at 600 yards just blew me away at any rate I hope this is of some use all the best goodbye